Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. Welcome to another episode of the Marketing Your Practice podcast, the podcast where I get to simplify the marketing and the mindset necessary so you, my chiropractic brothers and sisters, can increase your income, your impact, and your enjoyment in practice too. Let me start with this. There's no better new patients for us to look after than referred new patients. Walking into the consult room with the confidence that the patient has already begun that journey of knowing you, liking you, and trusting you, to me is a welcome relief. The challenge, though, is the complete unpredictability of referrals. Well, my guest on the podcast today is going to solve that problem for us. His name is Craig Foote. He is the founder and a coach at Chiropractic Flight School, and he's an expert in the field of a referral-driven practice. Now, Craig shares the two essential ingredients that come to stimulating referrals. We need to make sure that we're maximizing or at least optimizing both of these. We had a really fascinating chat about the importance also of actioning the referral immediately when that opportunity comes up. And Craig has a really neat way that he involves his CAs in that process. He talks through all of that and a whole bunch more when it comes to generating referrals and having and building a referral-driven practice. Craig is the absolute master. I think you're going to love this episode. It was a fun time chatting with Craig. He shares a couple of fun stories also about the times when he adjusted the wiggles and looks after the wiggles as well. Anyway, that's enough of me talking. Enjoy this episode. And as always, thanks for all that you do. Let's go chat with Craig. Craig Foote, welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast. How are you, buddy? Good, thanks, Angus. Uh, great to see you once again. Nice to see you too. We've gone some months, maybe even years, without actually seeing each other in person, and now here it is, almost uh, you know, twice in not much more than forty-eight hours. Let me start with this, though, buddy. What's it like being the head chiropractor for the Wiggles when they're over there in Perth? <laughs> it's actually really cool. Um, uh, I've been seeing those guys since two thousand and two. Yes, and uh, back with the old G, the OG, the original guys. Yes, and um, and I met them through a referral of another chiropractor, and uh, yeah. and then just sort of developed a relationship, particularly with Anthony Anthony Field, the Blue Wiggle. Yes, who's, uh, at this point, the only remaining uh, original guy there. Yes, um, and it's fantastic. I, I recently had a. Uh, uh, one of the guys from Birds of Tokyo start to come into the practice and get adjusted. And I was talking to my 18 year old daughter and I said, so what's cooler? Like is, you know, this, this guy from Birds of Tokyo, is that cool? Or, you know, like, or, or what? Like, is that better than the Wiggles? And she's gone, hell no, the Wiggles rock. <laughs> yes. I mean, so I was like, oh, I'll take that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they were just as, as big as can be for my kids growing up there too, but they're, they're very much global. What are they like um, as a as a crew, sort of behind the scenes? What's yeah. your take on 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 the guys and girls well, for that I matter would, too? Yeah, okay. I'd, I'd definitely say that they're family. They're actually just a, like a big family mm. um, and they are what they seem on, uh, on stage. So, you know what, if I'm talking to Anthony, it's, like he's he's got so much energy and he's like a fart in a bottle, right? Where you know, and he and you know, I'll walk in with the uh, table and he'll um, they'll. St- yeah, I remember a time where he just stopped there. They were doing a performance, like a rehearsal, and he's just bloody stopped everything. Hey guys, Doctor Foot's here. Let's everyone get adjusted. Go go go! Like just it was like full on because he really loves his Cairo. Like absolutely loves it. Mm. Um, and then everyone's a family member, like, like quite literally his, uh, his nephew is the, the manager and, and, um, and it, it's just beautiful. It's actually really lovely to work with people who are also just very, they know that they're just very blessed. They're very grateful for, mm. um, everything that has happened to them. So I, I love hanging around them, to be honest with you. What um what value did they see in the work that you delivered in chiropractic in general? You know what they probably um, um I'll 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 share a story if I may of going back a few years ago and this sort of puts it into perspective. So there was this guy, uh, I think his name was Dimitri, but effectively he was one of their backing dancers. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was a it was a circus theme or something at the time. And Dimitri had never been to a chiropractor before. Now, Dimitri's this Russian guy 
and he's like got muscles on muscles. And I found out that he was the ex head coach of the Russian gymnastics team. Ah, right? okay, yeah. And and in quotation marks, he defected or just moved to Australia. <laughs> yes, and good for him. This. So, so long long story short, he's um, he actually suffered injury. He actually had a, he did a he taught on this particular uh, trip a, a biceps tendon. You oh, can okay. see this thing bunching up, and but he'd just never been to a chiropractor before. And Anthony says, "Oh, you should get you know Doctor Foot to check you out." And so I have got Dimitri down there. This guy's huge, like he's massive, and I'm checking him out <clears throat> and uh, asking him a few questions, did all this stuff, and just just adjusted him. And he, he sits up, and, and um, I don't know Russian swear words, but I'm pretty sure he said something in that. And he, and um, and Anthony was that asked Fakanovsky? Him, Is that what he said? Yeah, Fakanovsky? yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yep. <laughs> that's right. Mm. And Anthony saw me uh, adjust him, and Anthony knew it was his first kind of adjustment at this point. He says, "How how did you go? Like, how, how was your first chiropractic adjustment?" And he's gone, "Yeah, you know, effing amazing. That that's I've never had that." And yes. um, and anyway, so that was before their first first uh, performance. They did five performances. We would adjust everyone before every performance yes. going on. By the end of it, um, Anthony once again asked, I wish I had got this on camera, mm. asked Dimitri, so if you had your time again with, you know, having, you know, when you're in the Russian gymnastics team and seeing physios and chiros, which, what would, what would, you, would you do anything different? And he's gone, well, I wouldn't have, uh, I'd have chiropractors and get rid of someone else. So, <laughs> yes. and I, and then I said, "Well, what makes you say that?" And he says, y "You guys don't interfere with my lead-up time. You just get the job done. It's quick. It's effective, and you're not mm. basically piss farting around for half an yeah. hour to an hour." Yeah, and I feel great. So it was it was like a really quite a uh, humbling thing. I just wish I had a camera on me at the time, but anyway, would have been lovely. It was pretty to cool. <laughs> I want to chat with you lots about. Um, referrals today and interesting as you mentioned there before that you ended up being the chiropractor of the wiggles because of a referral there is you know our listeners are going to know that the best quality of patients for us to see the holy grail is the internal referrals those people that already are a step closer towards um, knowing us, liking us, and trusting us. But they remain the holy grail in terms of there's this constant search for them. They're hard to get. Um, uh, it is something that you've developed a tremendous level of mastery around too. So we've got people listening. Where do we start? If we want more internal referrals in our practice, um, how does that begin? Well, I think um, the very first thing we need to maybe acknowledge is that we do actually have to have good skills in what we do so mm. you can't uh you can't polish a turd is a, <laughs> something i like the uh, yes to use and so if you're you know if you're doing adjustments and and either they're not uh, if they hurt that straight up is is a massive red flag so we, we can't be doing can't be doing that um but if you're refining your skills and you're doing the hard time um and getting better at whatever it is that you do, whatever technique you do, it doesn't actually matter. As long as you do it really well, then at that point we can start with, okay, what? how do we then package it? So one of the things that I see a lot of chiropractors doing, and this is a good thing in a way, but it's just that last 5%, we, uh, many people will fall short, is they go away to a technique seminar they go and learn all the techniques and they it could be whatever technique insert whatever name here and effectively they have this gift which I, I i like to think it's a gift that they're going to give to their patients in some way that what that's the technique that they've got but what they'll do most chiropractors will just put that gift in a brown paper bag and then give it to just sort of throw it at the patient yeah. you know, here here's a great gift and that patient will go well that's great it's in a brown paper bag and and um, well, easy access, I suppose, and that's kind of cool. Um, and then there's another way of giving them that gift, and that's giving them that gift in a really nice box with some really nice wrapping paper, a ribbon on top, and then just at the right time, giving it to them with both hands and saying, you know what, this comes from my heart and I really would love for you to have this gift. Mm. And that is an entirely different 
uh, reaction to then the first one with a brown paper bag. Mm. So it's yeah, you can't you got to have a good gift in the first place, but it's actually how it's packaged, the communication around it, um, understanding where they're at with their journey, and providing them value. I like that distinction. Let me start with this. How would I know if I'm good enough? So, you know, because again, you know, it's a, it's a very strong visual analogy of not being able to polish a turd. If I'm going to go and start to work on my communication, um, if I'm going to go work on the wrapping, which is such a beautiful analogy too, um, I think I'm good. My mum tells me I'm great. How do I actually know which I need to work on? Um, you know what? I think um, it starts with people being satisfied. And mm. the craziest things, as, as you would know, is satisfied people leave the practice. So mm. they, they get to a point where they've, you know what, um, Dr. Angus, you've, you've helped me so much. And next time I, I need you, I'll give you a ring and you'll be the first person I call. Um, and that's satisfied. Mm. You, know you, you know you're getting there where a person comments back to you i'm getting so much more out of this mm. experience than i ever dreamt you know the mm. person who is surprised by just how good they feel or what they can then do if you're seeing surprise in your your practice and in the faces of the people that you're caring for um, and gratitude that's when you're good mm. okay and all that just takes is just going an extra few little steps to make sure that we use that gratitude uh, moment, this is what we call it, a gratitude moment, mm -hmm. to actually focus that energy towards them, either sharing this information with someone else or becoming what we call a maven for your practice. Mm. I wonder <clears throat> when I'm asked this question, I, I often reflect back and I will ask somebody like, are you getting any referrals? I say, yeah, yeah, look, I might get one or two or three a month. Um, if you're getting some, it's probably a reflection. If you're getting none at all, like I guess if you were to look back over the last eight, 10 weeks, um, and, and that's provided that you're not just seeing one or two people a week, but if you're seeing a few people and you're not getting any referrals, it's probably a reflection that you could do a better job. Would that be a fair kind oh, of absolutely. assumption? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, absolutely agree with that. It's um, it, effectively like what whilst, you know, with coaching, we, we talk, we use numbers as a, as a measure of, you know, people go where people go. So if you're if you're seeing higher numbers in in practice, it doesn't necessarily it's not necessarily the goal of practice, but it just tells us that you're doing something right that people mm. are wanting to come and see you for some reason. Mm. If people are not telling others about you, then it's not it's not referral worthy in that case, and that's what we do need to find out why that is in that case. Yeah, my experience is. With most chiropractors, I actually think that most chiropractors are good enough. Um, I mean, they can always get better. And, you know, I know plenty of chiropractors who are just masters of their technique, beautiful, beautiful adjusters, um, and yet they have a hard time running a practice. I, I've had a, adjustments from some of our most um, famous chiropractors as well. They've been bloody horrible. Um, you know, <laughs> they really have. Uh, yeah. And admittedly, the environment of them perhaps hasn't been. I really apologize, Angus. Yes, I, I, yeah. I really wanted to do a better job for you. But well, geez. lucky I didn't ask you to adjust me on the weekend there, <laughs> there with me saying that too. But, you know, these chiropractors who have adjusted high volumes for decades there mm. too, you know, you'd expect it to be like a hot knife through butter there too. But some of them have been rough as guts, um, which I found fascinating. Because mm. it, it does come back to this idea of the importance of there being two sides to it. You know, one of it being the wrapping of how do you deliver it and then the other actually being the service itself. So let's just assume then, you know, to, to move forwards, because this is not going to be a technique seminar um, as well, but let's just assume that somebody is good enough. Okay, we yep. can all get better. And I think it should be something we should be constantly trying to get better at. Where do we begin from there? If I want to to wrap it better and deliver it? Because you talked about there being a, looking for those gratitude moments, delivering it with love, all those things too. Where do you start on that journey? The first thing we look at is um, what are the current referral opportunities that are existing in your practice right now? So like 
Um, one of the questions we ask, you know, delegates is, you know, if you think back of the week past, consider, you know, a patient who was just telling you about their auntie and never, you never really actioned that to get to maybe we should check the auntie out for a particular ailment or, mm. or what chiropractor can do. Or, you know, if someone is, is uh, doing the old, um, they're coughing, um, or they're saying, oh, that person gave me a cold and we missed that opportunity to sort of teach them an, an alternative way of uh, looking at that. Or, or, or we get so busy in practice and we see someone looking at a, a, a brochure or a poster that's on the wall and we don't have an engaging conversation around it because we've got all these people in the waiting room outside. The average delegate in the room at the start of the day would say that they probably would have missed realistically maybe between five and eight um, opportunities yes. in that past week. And you know, obviously it's not absolute uh, at all, but it gives them a, a reference point of, yeah, okay, I was pretty busy that day and I'm cut a few short, had a shortcut there and uh, I just couldn't be buggered, buggered on that other day. These sorts of, sort of things come up. Um, when we sort of teach them, um, particularly around the gratitude moment, I think that's probably the most important, one of the most important parts for this is that the very moment that someone shows gratitude in whatever way, that is also the exact same moment that you need to action it. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of chiropractors go, I'm just a bit busy. Angus is talking about sending his you know, little son in um, and I'm there just got um, basically balls to the wall and, and you're telling me how, how great you're feeling and you're thinking about bringing your family and say, yeah, that's a great idea. Look, I'll, 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 I'll talk to you about that on your next visit. Worst words that chiropractor can ever say. Right. Worst ever. Why? Because it could go forward another, you know, another week you're not maybe feeling so grateful, you're just satisfied now, sort of the, the moment has passed. And if you mm -hmm. try, if I try and recreate that, yes. I'm pushing it up here with a pointy stick. So we need to, in that very moment, um, act on it. Yes. And one of the biggest challenges that chiropractors have is they don't actually know how to act on it. That's was I was going to ask. So, cause I know that comes up a lot. They, I, I feel like a number of chiropractors listening to this will recognize all of these opportunities, but perhaps lack the confidence or the skills in order to know how to action those two. Um, can you help us out with that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so in our practice, we have these amazing people and we call them CAs <laughs> now. Never heard of them. Uh, Tell me more. Yeah, they're, they're, they're this fascinating. <laughs> they, we call them the bosses in our practice. So we yes, the chiros work for the CAs. Uh, actually, I do because my wife is our, our our office administrator, Kath. So, but <clears throat> okay. So what we do is you take whatever conversation you're having with the person. Let's say we're talking to you. You want me to check out Sunny? Um, I'll go relatively in the in the room that sounds like a good idea um, I'd love an opportunity to check out Sunny how about we come out to uh, the front and we'll talk to Kath about that literally take you out the front now if uh, I'm Kath there I'll literally this is the most basic thing I'll say in a we call it a three-way having a three-way yes conversation that is yeah. Um, works better than anything on email, any internal, that's all rubbish. You've got yep. to be face to face with both the patient and the CA. Yeah, yep. And I'll say, Kath, is it okay um, to set aside some time for us to check out Angus's son, Sonny? Is, it, is that okay if we do that? And I'll ask permission for the, from Kath, because as I said, she's the boss. Patient hears that, you hear that. And, and Kath says, sure. She's never said no to me, Angus. Right. She's never said no. She said, sure, definitely. would love to do that. Angus, come around here. Let's have, sort that out for you. And then I'll go, okay, Angus, you're in good hands. And I'm off. I'm going back to the room. It takes probably 20 to 30 seconds, mm -hmm. but it's done. Tell me why you wouldn't just say to Kath, Hey, Kath, just chatting with Angus in here before he's interested in getting his boy, Sonny, checked out. Can you help him organize a time? 
why do you ask a question to Kath as opposed to just going straight in terms of the request? <clears throat> Yeah, so because because I like to sort of uh, I like to treat with my staff, so I'll, oh. I'll, I'll always ask permission um, and be seen. I, I try and treat my staff the way I want my patients to treat my staff as well, mm. where I'm giving them this reverence and they've got control. They've got a lot of um, authority in our mm. practice. So we, the CA will help us do X-rays, for example. A CA will also be in the room taking notes when I'm doing an assessment. So there's the CA in our practice is actually definitely uh, doesn't just answer the phones. They're yes. very involved with in the team uh, approach to helping people forward. Now, I find if I ask the question, it feels softer. Yes. And it feels it feels more more genuine and a little bit more heartfelt. Yes. Whereas if I'm saying to Kath, Kath, you need to sort out <laughs> <laughs> seeing angers, it just doesn't come across. It's certainly not part of my personality to, yes. to do that. I'd, I'd mm. rather be asking than sort of demanding. But it sort of also then keeps it kind of light and kind of friendly and um, just yeah, it just has a different sort of feeling around that, I think. Mm. No, I like it. And it's not something I've ever heard before. And I mean, because I would make the request to my staff not in an asshole -ish way. I think I feel like I still did it in a nice way, but I, I felt immediately the softness of it um, when you framed it that way. So I, I like it. Are there any particular extra skill sets that our CAs need to have in this time now? So you've passed over the authority to them that's been built over there. You've asked the request, soft, handballed it over to me. I'm now with Kath. Are there anything in particular, you know, does Kath just get into the admin of, you know, what works better Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning, afternoon? Yeah, so Kath will determine, we, we sort of teach them, depend, depends on how, where they're at. So like effectively, if, if you'd said to me in the room, I said to you in the room, okay, um, uh, um, I'd, yeah, I'd love an opportunity to check Sunny out. And if you'd said to me, mm, yeah, okay, like there's this hesitation there. Yes. I would, I would actually then not even go much further than that yes. because there is hesitation. I don't want to, yes. it's kind of like, you know, if you, you know, I know I've fished, I do a bit of fishing, but if you try and pull on the, the rod too quick, it just doesn't, it doesn't hook the fish. Yes. Um, and it could come across as being a little bit desperate. So we only, so in that case, we would give them a, like a, we call it a little free yourself card, mm -hmm. um, which is basically when you feel that mm. you would like to make use of that opportunity, that's there for you. Mm. There's no date on it. There's nothing. But those cards are stored at the front desk. They cannot be in the rooms where you adjust. Right. Okay. So in that case, if we've if there's been a little bit of hesitation, I'll still get, can just come out the front. I'll give you something, and you know, just it's there when you when if and when you need it. Okay. You'll come out the front. I'll make sure Kath can hear me pick up this little, it's a bit it's bigger than a business card. It's called a free yourself card. That's what we use for Nirvana. Uh -huh. And it says the, the, uh, this person who brings this in gets a complimentary assessment and that to the value of this amount. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'll say, Angus, here's, this is for you. If you, you know, if you do want me to see Sonny, uh, just please use this at any time. Cool. And I'll give that to you with two hands. Um, uh, and then, but Kath has heard this. So Kath has actually seen it happening there and she'll just naturally ask you a question. Oh, um, what did Craig give that to you for? Like, was, was mm -hmm. there a certain person in mind? And then she'll just go with it from there. Okay, so that's that sort of part of it. But let's say, yes, um, you're at the front desk and you're pretty open to getting um, our Sunny in for, for a checkup. Then what Kath will do is usually she'll look at the appointment book Mm -hmm. um, but we know that time kills all deals. Yes. Right. We've got to identify, remember that your, this is your gratitude moment. Yes. We need to remove any obstacles and give a little bit more of a compelling uh, time period around it. So what Kath will do, she'll usually say, well, how about we, um, we'll get you some paperwork now. Let's uh, get you some paperwork now to give you some information, get things going. Uh, I can also email that out to you. Um, we've got this date or this date, which would you prefer? Um, if it's, if there's something coming up, let's say 
for instance, I'm having a holiday, uh, going away for a holiday for five, next five days. Mm. Kath will use that as a way of showing a little bit more urgency. So just, yes. just let you know, just let you know, not, nothing to be alarmed about, but Dr. Foot is going away for five days and he's not going to be here that time. Um, if you did want to bring Sunny in, if you wanted to do it, if we could do it here these two days, or alternatively, it'll be after that time. Mm. Now that's effectively, it is telling the truth, but yes. you could also say the same thing when, let's say I go and do a talk and I've got an upcoming talk coming up and then Kath will say, well, look, just to let you know, Dr. Foote's got a upcoming talk on this day. We do usually see a lot of people after that. I'd really love to maybe get Sunny in before that, if that's mm. okay with you. Um, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I love it. So it's working, well, obviously, with APRA guidelines here in Australia, we've got to be mindful about, you know, not having a deadline and things, but yes. you can do that stuff very simply as a, in speaking to them. Yes. Um, in a quite a congruent and authentic way. I'm interested in this. Obviously, there are those two sorts of referral opportunities in the rooms. There are the softballs that are thrown to us. Um, somebody talking about a loved one who could and would want some care and support. And, you know, the example with Sunny now, are there things that we can do to stimulate those so that we can create those opportunities rather than waiting for them to come up? Yeah, so, so absolutely. Probably the best thing, and I'll see it in the background. I'll grab mine here. Mm -hmm. So, oh, is that? So yeah, got yep. a, I'm showing yep. a picture of an autonomic nervous system. Um, we updated that back in 2016 or something like that. Um, and we actually created posters out of it. So they're based on the old Parker posters. I was just really sick of seeing seaweed um, on my uh, Parker posters. But we just have spinal nervous system um, uh chart and the autonomic nervous system chart in the rooms right that's yes. the only things we have up we don't have a massive amount of brochures we don't have a massive amount of um uh iceberg posters sort of talking spooking chiropractic philosophy yep. and things which is all important but we just keep that in the back room where no one sees it yes um good idea with the with these rooms if they've only got two posters to look at then when you walk into the room, they're usually looking at one of the posters. I'm going to yes. say probably about 80% of the time they're looking at the autonomic nervous system poster. Yep. And it's there as a trigger to have a conversation. And yep. they'll be looking at a part of the poster and I'll straight up say, what do you see there? And you'll say, oh, I didn't realise the bowel had some connection to the lower back. I didn't realise that. And then my next sort of question would be well what makes you say that oh well my friend from bob from work has mm -hmm. actually had some bowel issues more recently and he's getting some scans on and i go oh that's interesting how about we lay you down angus and check you out and i won't actually answer it at that point right because because that's the worst part in a office visit to action anything is at the start of the visit bad call got Why? it because the message is going to get lost in the adjustment. Yes. So you're laying down. I'm clearly focused on um, adjusting you to the best of my ability. And at the same time, I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to word this when he gets up from the table about his mate Bob mm. with the bowel issue? All right. So then I've got a little bit of time to work that up. And we adjust you. We sit you up. And then I have a little conversation around... Um, yeah, well, we, we find that chiropractic can help people in many cases and blah, blah, blah. And we have a conversation. Um, and then I might even say, um, uh, um, look, if Bob was interested in getting an assessment one day, I'd love to have the opportunity to check him out. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then I might say, is that something you'd be interested in? You might go, oh, yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll usually give him one of those free yourself cards on the way out and say, I'd love to check Bob one day. See you later. And then that's all done. So it's about having the trigger in the room mm. and the conversation. Now, what I see a lot of people do, and this is kind of like around business cards, right? Mm. Like if you have to hand your business card to someone, yep. you've missed the point. 
if they ask you for your business card, now you're talking. Yeah. And it's about the conversation you have before that. Yeah, love right, it. To get that. One of my favorite ways was I, 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 my, a lot of my table talk was just telling stories of other patients. Um, and I would get on a bit of a theme for the week and it, you know, how are you today, Angus? I'm doing great, Craig. You know what? I'm feeling super grateful today. I had this beautiful little baby in this morning and off I would tell the story. And that would be my way of just throwing a softball out there to see would they hit it or not? Where would things go? Oh, wow. I didn't know that chiropractic could help with those kind of things. And a certain number of those people would engage with me back in the story in the way that I could then follow it through into a process very similar to what you talked about beforehand, other than asking my front desk, I would tell them in a nice way though too. <laughs> but that was a strategy for me that, you know, I, I would pick very common type of things, whether it be a, a, a headache or a colicky baby or, you know, some digestive problems and things like that too. That was my strategy for starting to kind of stimulate these sorts of conversations. I was always a big fan too in those situations where that person was talking about Bob at work with our digestive problems to offer the opportunity of also just a phone consult. And, and I would, this is where I would go on the reverse here. And I would say, look, clearly chiropractic can't help everything. And it's not the solution for all digestive problems, but I'd love to have a chat with Bill. Like if he were up for just a chat on the phone, I'd love to find out a little bit more about his digestive system and see if I can find a chiropractor that's close for him, whether there's someone in around work or where he lives there as well. Can you ask Bill if he's up for that? And then we can work out from there. So I'd really go on the backwards, you know, probably couldn't help. It's not me that I'm going to try and find with him. And it used to blow me away how many patients would say, you would chat to Bill? I'm like, yeah, I'd love yeah. to. So That's brilliant. Um, it, um, it was an easy strategy to, but you're, you know, if I think back to how many of my patients would be looking at those nerve system charts and not once did I ever do that. I, I missed a lot of those. It's such a simple and easy thing. And, and they do, they love those charts um, they, as they well. They really do. The, um, yeah, so you're talking about the story. The storytelling is so critically important. You spoke about that at DG on the weekend and, and you'd, um, you know, I've heard you on the podcast before, you know, people telling their own story and things like that. Um, I, I would say to you that is a very important part of having getting the referrals so we what you were talking about there we would call that a hero story mm -hmm. you know a successful story of someone who's uh, done well now it's got an appropriate for the audience you know you mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily talk to a, a, a businessman who doesn't have any kids about the colicky kid who's Correct. just done really well with care it's got to be appropriate yes um and in line with their values but there's also uh, anti-hero stories that we use as well. Oh, tell practice. me more. And yeah, and that's not a villain. I know, I know you know that, but just for the listeners out there, an anti-hero is not a villain. An anti-hero is kind of like a, a wannabe hero. They really want to do well, and from in practice, they really want to do well in the in the practice and do well with their care. However, they their ability to apply themselves is a bit stuffed right so these people will do the missed appointments um they'll drop out of care for a bit and they'll come back in oh never going to miss a visitor again and then they'll drop out once again then they'll, and it's like we call them b grade patients because they want to be a grades but they're just not sort of doing it uh, out of interest there is a c grade patient that's crap crap patients we try right. to steer away from those um but they're just b grade patients so let's say if I sort of am picking up that this person is, um, let's say, about to drop out of care, they're kind of like not as engaging in conversation, they've maybe missed a couple of appointments, I might share a story about an anti-hero. Let me tell you about Betty, if I may. Betty was going so well with her care and then she mm -hmm. started, you know, feeling that she was maybe putting too much energy on herself and not enough for her kids. And she sort of, sort of started sort of pulling back from her care. Um, and then she even put it on hold for a bit. The problem is six months goes down the track. Betty comes back in. Betty's in a bad way. We're really struggling. We have to do, we all have to start from scratch once again. So it's sort of like a very, I mean, that's a very basic story. Yes. But it sort of sets the tone that, hey, you know what? You're doing really well, but don't drop out. You're nearly there. Um, yes. Um, Another way the hero is, is we talk about 
um, maybe a person, so a hero technically, if we look at sort of all the storytelling, is a person who goes through some adverse um, sort of event. They're a normal person. They've been thrown into this event and they've succeeded in some way. They've been challenged and they've succeeded in some way. So the perfect thing would be to, to share a story of someone who's got similar um, issues and challenges to the person you're talking to um, and tell them about what happened if they just stayed the course. So let me tell you about Betty. I talk about Betty a lot. Um, let me tell you about Betty. She's just like you. She's a you know, single mum, three kids, and she was doing really well with her care, but then she sort of got a, um, she was sort of at that point where do I keep going with this? And, you know, I'm feeling better, but I've got these kids to care for. And then Betty realised that if she was looking after herself, she couldn't look after her kids. So she stuck with it. And she did this and she did this amazing result. And that's pretty much it. Now, I would say to people, it has to be a truthful story. Yes. Absolutely truthful story. Uh, people smell BS from miles away. Mm. Um, and when you see larger numbers of people, the truthful stories you always remember. Mm. Um, you just don't, please don't lie with this stuff. This is what I would say. Mm. I got to imagine a number of these opportunities present themselves when you're not even around. Are your CAs looking for these opportunities as well? Do they show up differently for them? And do they have a different um, strategy of dealing with them? When they pop up, yeah, yeah. So, so what we'll do, our our girl. So, Kathy is um, has been a CA for twenty one years. Mm. The CA's trainer, trainer kind of thing. She so is. she's 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 the master of um, all things at the front desk. But what we'll try and do in that case is we'll we'll see people in the waiting room, and we'll try and link them up. So we have a pretty large waiting area. And we'll try and link up two people. So we, we maybe we work out that they, they go they, their kids go to the same school together, or they uh, work in similar parts of town, or they both have an interest in Lego. God, that actually is a true statement. Mm -hmm. That one. Um, but but what will happen is that Kath will say to person A, "Hey, person A, just want to just let you know that person B over here." Um, just brought in his Lego rocket ship that was six feet tall the other day to show us. Um, you 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 like Lego too, don't you? And then we just let him go. Yes. So so it sort of like drops the the little hand grenade in or the the um, the thing, and then they they're talking. Does a few things. It naturally does sort of they have a bit greater affinity time passes faster because they're talking about interesting stuff um, they maybe sometimes share phone numbers and things like this this actually happens we've had yeah. people go on dates you know like it's pretty uh -huh. pretty funny right yeah um, but then but that that's more rapport but referrals would be Kath might say to one person hey um Betty, um, uh, Susan over here's got a new baby at home. Um, you've brought your kids in from a very early age. Is it possible you could just share with Susan what you've gotten out of you know getting the kids in over that period of time? And then bang. Mm -hmm. um, then you've got sort of an unbiased person who's highly credentialed talking, who's not going to benefit anything out of this, talking to another person about you effectively. So it's kind of like a, it, it, you have to know, I think the key thing about this is you have to know sort of where people are at with their care. So that's why the CA is because they're so involved yes. with their care. They're at the reviews, they're in the x-rays, they're doing, helping us with scans and things. They, they actually know where people are at. Um, and that actually works really well. Um, the other thing, of course, is, is when we do a progress exam or a progress report or a comparative report, I will always come out to the front desk with them and say, hey, um, uh, poor Betty's getting a hiding, but Betty. It's Betty and um, Bill today. Have yeah, a, Betty and a Bill. Belting. Betty, hey, Betty, um, uh, I'll, I'll grab, you know, we use a, a CLA Insight. 
yeah. um, subluxation is one of the things we use. And I'll say, can I, can I just show the girls this? Is that okay if I come out the front and show the girls this? Is that okay? Cool. Okay, let's come out the front there, Betty. Hey, um, uh, Kath, check out Betty's results. Check out this. All right, Betty, you're doing great. We'll catch you once a week going yeah, forward. Nice. Well done on you. Now, Betty's there. She's looking at the report. Kath will go, oh, wow, Betty, that's actually really cool. And then she'll try and bring in someone else if they can into the conversation. If someone's right at the front doing some kind of receding, she'll get them in as well. So it's, there's quite a few interactions that occur at the front desk without the chiropractor around mm. um, that is very, very critical to people getting referred in. The first way I was ever introduced to the whole referral, particularly stimulating referrals, was this <clears throat> who do you know framework. Um, never sat well with me. I, I, you know, I, I had an accountant once ask me that way there too. It just, uh, you know, and, and the, the idea is, is to share some story in around chiropractic and then go, Craig, who do you know that could benefit from chiropractic and either give me their details and I'll call them or hear some cards go out and reach them there as, as well. I don't, and again, this could be just me. And if, if our listeners have success with this as a strategy, I'd love to know because so often as chiropractors, we stand up on a stage and we say these things and in the crowd, we woohoo, like that's fantastic. And then we go, that's actually dumb. It's a dumb idea. And, and again, there too, is there an element of that? Who do you know that works? Have I missed something out there too? Um, is it something that maybe is culturally not Australian? I, what are your yeah, thoughts on yeah. that? You know what I think, like, I, I mean, I've, uh, like yourself, have uh, spoken in uh, the US. I, I have lots of US friends, North American friends, and and I would say that culturally we are different in this regard, I think, especially in, I think, Commonwealth countries. So um, uh, Australia, uh, UK, Canada, we're a lot more conservative and um, a little bit more prone to being sort of on the guard with kind of like mm. uh, salesy kind of stuff coming across now um i think it just doesn't travel as well here now i, I will let you know i've tried all this because i thought well how how who am i to um be sort of teaching people about inspiring referrals if i haven't in fact tried some of these things yeah. and and i remember the moment i asked someone to refer someone in it, i felt dirty <laughs> I felt just, I felt like it wasn't a proud moment for me and it did, clearly didn't work. Mm. Um, and I thought, couldn't help but think, and it sort of reminded me of, you know, if someone says, you can trust me, right? Yes. What's the <clears> first <throat> thing we, uh, we, we, so we're on guard, right? We, well, if you're mm. having to say, you can trust me. Uh, I think someone said at the DJ on the weekend, you know, the worst thing you can say to a person is, to relax yes just before you're about to adjust yeah. and, um there's a you know a bit of variation on that but it's exactly right it, it does the opposite effect so you know i think uh, i'm about being authentic and um natural and not pushy um but we work like hell on creating an environment where it is if the moment that that opportunity presents we are absolutely on it. There's no way it's being missed mm. um, uh, in that moment, um, and it and it and it works quite well. You know, we mm. have refined it. That's for sure. It's been mm. a long time, but we're there. You've been teaching this stuff for a long time. You've got um, some events that you've been teaching in the past. Some coming up that are time sensitive um, at the moment. Tell us a little bit. Is it a, a one day, two day seminar? Um, it's, it's a one day. What? Yeah, just um, a one day. What, what are people going to learn when they come along to that? Yeah, cool. So we'll, we'll be teaching them all, well, uh, at least 20 plus ways of increasing referrals in your practice that you can literally do straight away. So it's not something that you have to um, study and refine over the next three to four months to yep. implement. It's straight away you can implement it. Um, it is designed for teams. So one of the biggest Yes. Sort of feedback we got from Perth is we definitely had chiropractors there. We even had physios there to be to be quite uh, frank with you, and yep. they got a lot out of it as well. Of course they would. Uh, so it's not necessarily chiropractic centric. It's more around identifying and communicating your value 
uh, that they see that as well. So we, but the people who got the most out was bringing their team. So they brought the CAs there because they can, we can teach them how to um, engage with people at that front desk and action on it. Um, we talk about things like um, uh, how to tell a story, a hero story mm. and a hero story. Uh, we talk about identifying um, referral opportunities, the importance of a gratitude moment. Um, we share something, so something that we've sort of realized in this last iteration of inspiring referrals is the importance of having a signature experience. So, um, a sign and, and it has to be authentic to the person. So, an, um, a signature experience is one that people go, wow. Mm -hmm. They have to go, wow, or be surprised. Um, but that takes a little bit of refining and developing. And I share sort of one of our one of our signature experiences of the first visit. So the very first chiropractic adjustment that someone has, not the first visit, but the first adjustment that they have, there's a, a, a method we go through where I go through and I, I, I just show people what it looks like. Mm. Um, and there's key things as a part of that. You know, there's gotta be an element of surprise, not scare the crap out of them, but <laughs> an element of surprise. Mm. You've gotta be able to predict the outcome mm. Uh, that you're they're about to have, um, and then and then deliver on on that. Like then they do the three key things there, um, to the point where they go, wow, that is that is I never expected that much, mm. and that's the, and everyone can do that now. For uh, some people, it's it might that um, that experience may actually occur in a report of findings, or it might yes. occur on their initial consult. You know that just that initial consult talking to people and, and making them feel like they've never been listened to like yeah. anyone before that in itself is a authentic um, and uh, signature experience one of our chiropractors who was at the uh, Perth workshop I said I said to everyone uh, what are you known for uh, and and we broke it down and he said I, I'm actually known to be the person who really just listens and I said that's a fantastic thing that your yes. people share with everyone else and so you need to leverage that and and it, so it's always authentic to what the person is but someone just needs to be refined and that's what we go through so that's mm -hmm. just some of the things it is very interactive we're not sort of uh, we've tried to do inspiring referrals online in videos right you can't netflix this stuff you can't do it you have to be um engaged and I sort of teach people, uh, we do some um, uh, activities and things. So it's, we always do make it a bit of fun. And I do even have Muppets. Muppets? Uh, yes. I we love actually it. actually use Muppets um, to teach a few things, which I just wanted to use Muppets. That's the only really reason. So I love it, fun. buddy. I love it, love it. M my experience, Craig, of, you know, I, I think the most time I got to spend with you was when you were president of the Spinal Research Foundation there, you're, you know, there's nothing that I have seen you do that hasn't been backed by tremendous hard work, substance and experience. Um, I, you know, I've had the pleasure of witnessing a lot of that in particular over the last, you know, six to eight years. And, you know, I know firsthand of many people who've worked with you and they rave about the work that they've done with you. I would encourage any of our listeners you know, to look at Craig's stuff. So, you know, there is one-on-one -on -one coaching. There are other programs he does as well. And if you can get to any of the Australian events, particularly um, a, a, about the referral, then please do it. Because, you know, I, I go on this podcast a lot about, it's not an, it, for some reason, we often think in practice, it's an either or. You, we either have an internal referral built practice or one that markets externally. It doesn't have to be that way. They're, they're not mutually exclusive. You can do both. But we definitely shouldn't be ignoring because internal referrals are just such a good guide of am I doing a good job, which is where we started with. So, brother, thank you so much for all the learning and time and effort and um, for being willing to be creepy and ask people who do they know um, in, in the uh, uh, all in, in science there is, as well. And I will not leave it so damn long before we chat again. So um, thanks for today, buddy. Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks so much, Angus. And, and look, um, I want to say to you, thank you for your time on, on the board as well. Like you, um, you brought, uh, 
really some good thinking and you challenge me and I appreciate you for it and the foundation is better for it as well. So thank you uh, for that and thanks for your friendship and thanks for uh, uh, reaching out once again and, and getting, having me on. It's been a pleasure. Lovely, lovely, mate. I'll make sure, gang, all the links so you can find out about Craig and his events will all be in the show notes too. So check those out. Dude, see you soon. Cool. See you later. If you've enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out my Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work with you to help you apply it, implement it and systemize it. The Community Influencer Group Coaching Program is designed to help you increase your practice income, impact and enjoyment. Join me over at anguspike.com forward slash join. That's anguspike.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you there.